are officially one month away from this year's draft. We take a dive into the mock madness to see who the experts have coming to Washington, and we decide whether they would be a good fit in D.C. Plus, Terry McLaurin is coming off his first career Pro Bowl season. We take a look back at his top plays from the season and discuss his role in Eric Bieniemy's new offense. And our newest offensive tackle, Andrew Wiley, plays a game of fill in the blank as we continue to get to know our free agents. Welcome on into Command Center. Julie Donaldson, Logan Paulson, Santana Moss. And guess what, folks? One month until the NFL draft. Things are getting Ooh. exciting. Might be a little quiet until we get there. Yeah. Uh, but you always ramp up for this time of year, right, Santana? I look forward to it. You know, I'm one of those guys that didn't pitch into the draft when I was playing. Right. <laughs> but now on the other, I'm in the other seat now, so I'm always getting geared up for it. Yeah, the draft's always a great time of year because it's how you build your roster out. It's yeah. the young talent, the guys that are going to be the faces of the franchise moving forward into the future. So I, I get super excited for this time of year. Absolutely. And this year, Washington will have eight selections. Let's take a look at where they will be coming from. So the commanders there uh, will be selecting first in 16th overall. That's their first selection. Remember, that was where they selected Jahan Dotson last year. Uh, they earned an additional third and sixth round pick as compensation for the losses of Brandon Sheriff and Tim Settle during free agency last season. Time for our mission debrief brought to you by the Washington Times. And let's go through uh, next month's pick in the mock draft and this is where the experts are saying they anticipate Washington going we'll see if these guys would be a potentially good fit for us here in Washington we got to start with Mel Kuyper Jr right if he has yeah. like this is That's his forte guy. he says Washington we know we need some help in the DB area the secondary but he's going Emmanuel Forbes cornerback out of Mississippi State Logan what do you think about them taking a defensive back in the first round well I know is that French Foot was here he'd be losing his mind he was <laughs> the guy that he wants everybody to take is Emmanuel Forbes yeah. and <laughs> Big reason why is because he's an excellent football player. He's yeah. got one of the best ball productions in college football history, most pick sixes of all time. Really outstanding football player, but very small, 166 pounds. But in terms of the position, I think that's right. I think you want to go DB there because yeah. whether I agree with this specific guy or not, I'd probably go Deontay Banks out of Maryland, but I think this is the way I would probably go at 16. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I would like that more so not what Mel thinks, but what Fred thinks. You know, <laughs> Fred broke this guy down so much to me. Now I'm I'm convinced, and now he's he needs to be here. But I think he fits one of those positions that we need. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. One of those guys, and you know, we got about three of them. I say all the time. But this guy can play opposite of St. Juice, and I think he'll be a great shutdown, lockdown. You know, uh, play follow number one type of uh, wide receiver, cornerback. I think we're anticipating them adding some depth to this position. Sure. Is it 16th overall? Not entirely sure, uh, because everybody has a difference of opinion. And the next one we're going to go to is Daniel Jeremiah from NFL.com, and he's going of an interesting pick here, saying Dalton Kincaid, a tight end out of Utah. Logan, I, look, we know the enemy, you, how he used Travis Kelsey in his offense in KC, but is this too high for a tight end? This, to me, feels a little bit too high for a tight end. Now, you know, Kincaid's an excellent football player. He's one of the best pass-receiving tight ends in the draft. Kind of that dynamic guy who can attack the scene, which you're looking for. Not great in the run game. I just think positional value-wise, Tana, you can get other positions that are more valuable. Offensive line, corner, yeah. even edge rusher for this team. You know, Montez Sweat and Chase Young, their contents will be up after next year. So I think you go a different direction. That's no knock on Kincaid. I think he's an excellent football player, but I just think it's too high for a tight end. Yeah, I definitely think he's a great talent. I think we have a lot of guys here that we, that need a shot to have that, you know, that that I guess you can say that we can say who could be our next Kelsey. Yeah. But uh, I think we have other guys, too, that yeah. we're going to probably, you know, uh, emphasize more on the offense. So we don't need to go out there and stretch too much for another tight end. Now we know we need some additions on the offensive line. They address that a little bit in free agency, but that doesn't mean that they cannot continue to add when the draft comes up. And David Hellman and Carmen Vitali of Fox Sports, they are saying Broderick Jones, offensive tackle out of Georgia, Santana. Well, I say, I always say that you can never go wrong with getting offensive linemen. Yeah. Uh, we brought in Wiley, we brought in Gates. Uh, Wiley might be playing the right tackle. Yeah. This guy can be the left tackle. Who knows? Yeah. You know, we have Leno still. So you never go wrong with that, but I think it's going to all bow down to see, you know, what these guys slated at. You know, if you have him available and the cornerback available, 
who's who has right. the most value. You know? Well, like you said, Tanda, like going across positional is really, really challenging. And Roger Jones specifically, he's one of these guys that's extremely high upside. He's one of the fastest, most athletic offensive linemen in the class, but he's only got 19 starts. So not very experienced, a little bit of green around the edges. When you watch his film, you say, really, really high ceiling, also very, very low floor. So is that the kind of risk you want to incur at 16? Not sure. Yeah, this is why we all like the mock draft madness. Everybody has a different <laughs> selection. And of course, you just never really know how the pieces are going to fall because somebody might make some moves, trade up, trade down. And I think that's going to be an interesting thing. And does Washington decide to trade back Ooh, from yeah. 16 as well and pick up some extra selections? Uh, we will find out in a month. Can't believe it's almost here. Uh, well, earlier this month, the commanders, they strengthened the offensive line by re-signing center Tyler Larson to a one-year extension. He's been with Washington for the past two seasons, making eight starts during the 2022 campaign. When healthy, he has helped lead the commanders to a 6-1-1 record as a starter this past season. Here he is now with Logan to discuss his extension. Sitting here with Tyler Larson, man, so good to have you back in the building. Last time we saw you, obviously, injury. How are you feeling after that? Feeling great. Rehab's going along. Uh, haven't had any setbacks, and we got a great staff downstairs, and they're getting me right. Yeah, because I remember last time I saw you, it was like you were sitting in the lobby out here, and, you know, we get to interact a little bit, and I was like, man, that sounds pretty serious. Yeah. And then you're walking in here, you look great, like a little <laughs> bit of a false alarm, <laughs> right. what's going on? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, <laughs> as soon as you get your injury, you just, I guess, think of the worst thing possible. Right. And then... Uh, then you keep hearing things here and there, and then finally you talk to the doctor and, you and everything's, it's, yeah, everything's you, great, you're right? Stressing for nothing, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So obviously, you know, back, you think you bring a really unique skill set at center, right? You're mm -hmm. a bigger guy. What's the advantage there for you? Do you think? Um, I mean, if people watching the game, you see that you get the huge offense or defensive lineman across. Uh, mm -hmm. So having size and strength does help a little bit. Um, I think. I do have a lot of <laughs> size, of and I, I mean, I do have strength, but uh, yeah, it, it, it definitely helps me in some tough spots. Obviously, uh, I don't want to get too big. You know, <laughs> no one does, right? And stuff, yeah, so I can have a little bit of speed, but um, yeah, I just try to um, utilize whatever I have to be successful, and uh, I just got to play to my strength. Yeah, I was talking to some guys at the Combine about how the bigger centers are better in pass protection. Mm -hmm. Do you find that that's helpful for you? Or I do it... find that a lot more helpful because, you know, I would say probably 80% of the rushes that I get are bull rushes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, two-minute or third-down situations, it's a little bit different. But right. um, I, I do find having a little bit of size helps me anchor down a little <laughs> bit more rather than getting uh, just blown back completely. Yeah, and absolutely. And even though you're a bigger guy, you move well in space. And obviously, Eric, the enemy's here. Big screen team. Mm -hmm. Are you excited for this new challenge? Oh, or? definitely. Uh, it's always, you know, it's fun to get into a new offense and mm -hmm. see how, you know, their tendencies and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I think setting up screen games is yeah. it's going to be huge for us on, as an offense and, uh, you know, keep people guessing and stuff like that rather than you know, it, it, it's just going to be good having a new type of offense out there. And, you know, people don't really know what to expect right, quite yet. Right. So uh, it'll be exciting to see what's coming. And obviously Creed Humphrey, the starting center for Kansas City, one of the best in the NFL. Is there, do you watch a lot of his film? Have you watched? I do, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've noticed that he's a left-handed snapper. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, no, he's, I mean, he he's just, he's got that intensity uh, out on the field. He's a fun guy to watch. He really is. Um, uh, he's got the athleticism, all that. Um, yeah, so he's he's a very good guy to watch, and I'm glad that you know we got Coach B coming, and uh, you know I'll be able to watch him more and try to bring whatever he brings right. out to my it, game. Is there anything that this offense does that elevates centers or puts centers in a good spot, in your opinion, or is um, it just like he's a baller? I mean, he a lot of it is that he's <laughs> just a baller. Obviously, he had you know uh, great guys around him, and this offensive line does as well, mm -hmm. uh, but. I haven't really gotten to see the offense fully right. or, you know, that much. So I, I, I don't exactly know what type of schemes and stuff like that for a center. But um, just seeing what he's done right. on the field, I think centers can be very successful and do a lot. Well, awesome, man. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Glad to have you back, brother. Happy to be here. Glad, to see, glad, glad that you're healthy also, yep. man. Thank you. Well, new additions to the roster means new jersey numbers for our guys. And here's a look at what numbers our free agents will be donning in the Burgundy and Gold this upcoming season. Of course, you can head on over to the team's pro store to purchase your new commander's jersey today. And coming up, Scary Terry has earned his nickname for good reason. We take a look back at his top plays from the past season and discuss how he will fit in to Eric Bieniemy's offense. 
and you can get ahead of the game and secure your luxury suite for the 2023 season. Experience the excitement of a commander's game from the climate-controlled comfort and privacy of a luxury suite. Enjoy gourmet catering options, VIP parking, and more for you and your guests. Learn more and place your suite deposit for the 2023 season at commanders.com slash suites. Welcome back to Command Center. This past season, Commander's wide receiver Terry McLaurin became the first player in franchise history to record three straight 1,000-yard seasons since Henry Eller did the same back in 1994 to 96. His stellar play earned him his first career trip to the Pro Bowl, and with so many memorable moments from the past season, we narrowed it down to our top ten. This is our field pass presented by FedEx, where now meets next. Scored a touchdown on their opening drive here in the second half. On first and 10 from the 16, Wentz fires, looking for McLaurin, who made the adjustment and makes the catch. Here's another angle, Kenny. Empty backfield here for Taylor Heineke, making his second start of the season, and there's McLaurin down the sideline. Welcome back to Indianapolis, Terry McLaurin. Played his high school ball 10 miles from a little bit of offensive momentum, a little bit of energy. Yeah, KP told us about that adjustment, and sure enough, it's playing out. Now a deep ball for Terry McLaurin. He's got it. Big play for the first time today. Getting over the top, and there's McLaurin. And one of the things, McLaurin, and one of the things you have to understand, uh, when you go deep like that, when you go on a... He only got into six games. Wentz, deep drop, pressure on, gets rid of it. Sideline throw. He's got Terry. Washington you see him you see that acceleration just finding that spot that throw had to be perfect because if Carson Wentz doesn't get there on that trajectory the safety has time to get over there safety can't get over first and 10 Heineke blocked by Bates going deep he's got him McLaurin what a catch at the five Got the ball down at the six. The penalty is thrown, but McLaurin is able to bring it in. Excellent body control and vision when you got two defenders. Play of the game right now. Heineke hit as he throws. Launches. It is caught. Terry McLaurin holds on. Kenny Clark barreling down on you. You stand in the pocket. You make your throw. And look at Terry McLaurin battle back to beat Jair Alexander to that catch. Barring some sudden turnaround here today, that, that appears the way Dallas came out. Here's how to throw it. Loading up. Going deep. And he's got a man. It is caught by McLaurin. Has a big time arm who can spin it and push it down the field. I mean, this ball is in stride. He runs right by Mullen. 37. That's two great. Airs it out. McLaurin downfield. Hit him in stride, and the catch is made. What a throw and catch. And for McLaurin to be able to track that ball down and bring it in. So there's the big play. That's something that the Eagles have not given. Heineke sets up, looking for Terry McLaurin against Alexander. It is caught. Touchdown. Commanders take the lead. Clock ticking, down to 40 seconds. Heineke, looking, Heineke. They keep the play alive again. He flips it downfield, and McLaurin, the hometown kid, hauls it in at the one-yard line. What a grab. What about the relationship between Tyler Heineke and Terry McLaurin? You can see it's kind of that double move. Once he gets that scramble and buys a little bit more time, he goes up with one of the best core and most experienced quarterbacks in football, gets the ball on the shoulder and just rips it away from him. That's just a little bit of will. That's just, I want this ball. The ball's in the air, it's mine. 
and certainly uh, is quite a season he put together. And we know he's capable of even more. Five touchdowns, we need much more. We will get that as well as we know going forward. But that one against the Colts, I think it was really kind of special because it was in Indianapolis. Yeah. It's the stadium that he grew up a fan where he went to the games watching it with his dad. And to put on a performance in front of so many of his hometown fans and friends and family and everything was pretty cool. Um, but Santana, you're, you're an expert here. Is that the mm -hmm. number one? I won't call him the expert. But uh, I mean, I, I, I think so. I think for the... Um, the volume of work he put up last year. You got to look at the moment, the moment of the game, being back at home uh, against the kind of, you know, uh, competitive that he, that he was going up against in uh, Gilmore. And it's just, you know, being the guy that we always expect Terry to be. So uh, I rank it one. You rank it one, Tana? Yeah. I mean, I, th I personally think that the, the catch against Green Bay, that comeback in the last little minute of the game there against Jair Alexander, you know, where Terry Haneke's letting that ball go with so much anticipation. He's fighting back for the football. To me, that's what Terry's all about. That's one of the best plays I've ever seen. So that, I'm going to have to put that as my personal number one. Okay. You know, a lot of times we're, we're talking about how dynamic Terry is and how the complimented Jahan Dotson kind of kind of like help him even be more effective into this offense. But now you have a new offensive coordinator um, in Eric Bieniemy. How do you anticipate he's going to use Terry, Logan? I mean, I think that's going to be the million dollar question because right now they got to figure out the best way to kind of maximize skill sets. So one of the things about the Kansas City offense is he found ways to maximize the playmakers. Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, that offense changed as those guys became more and more productive. So what are Terry's skill sets and how do you speak to that? I think that's going to be the million dollar question this offseason. I think that was a great answer to that because we still haven't seen the best of Terry. I keep saying, I mean, this guy could burn basically anybody you put in front of him. You know, we haven't really got a chance to really see a lot of that. We saw bits and pieces here and there. So I believe he's going to be that wide receiver one, but you have another wide receiver in uh, Dawson who can be 1B, you know what I mean? So I, I think, but being Terry, being the guy that he is, um, you know, uh, EB will find out that I have to run my offense through the passing game through Terry first. So uh, he has had so far three straight 1,000-yard seasons. Who's willing to say he'll go for four? Four seasons in a row, 1,000 yards. I'm going to go on. Yeah, you know, you know, I was going to say, that seems like a yeah. safe bet. You know what I mean? The guy who's just this consistent as he is. Offense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting because everybody wants to know, what does an offense under Eric Benamy look like with the players that he has here? And he's quick to say he wants to play to the strength of his guys. And there's yeah. a lot of great options for them to play to. So is it the run first game that they want? How do you work the receivers in? It'll be electrifying either way. Way. Well, we do have a bit of a programming note for you to update you on, and that is at the end of the month. Coming up here, Command Center is going to be leaving NBC Sports Washington. Doesn't mean, though, that the show is coming to an end. We will continue to deliver you, the fans, the best content involving your favorite team. You can watch the new episodes of Command Center each week on the team's website and YouTube channel. And coming up, newest commander Andrew Wiley has had a busy offseason following his Super Bowl victory. He joins us in studio to share what he is like off the field next. And level up your 2023 Commander's Game Day experience in the Loge Level Shared Suites. Enjoy plush open-air seating, all-you-can-eat catering, private premium bar, and the exclusive Loge Lounge. Learn more and secure your Loge experience for the 2023 season now at commanders.com slash suites. Our delivery of the week is presented by Paisanos. Order online at paisanospizza.com. I couldn't live without probably just a nice steakhouse within driving distance. Did you say steak? Top bucket list item. Um, luckily, I got to uh, marry this woman that we got standing over here in, uh, in about 100 days here in June. So that is uh, that's a bucket list Aww. item. If I was an emoji, I would be, I'd be the one that thinks like this. That one. If there is a zombie apocalypse, I would... Rain! Rain! Man, I don't want to like get my whole plan out there. But, you know, I got a little plan set up. I would go back to the farm in Michigan. On my off day, you can find me uh, probably at my local card shop. So we got to find out uh, where those are around here. If I wasn't a football player, I would be, man, I would probably, uh, man, I'd probably be working for my dad on the farm, man. He's, uh, he's a landscape contractor. He's got his own business going. So I'd probably be, uh, probably be still right there in Michigan, hands and knees doing the hard way. My hidden talent. Uh, man, I mean, I'm a natural born hooper. Honestly, that was my first sport. So my hidden talent is definitely, uh, playing hoops. 
My favorite movie is Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy. Great Odin's Raven! My go-to pre-game meal, uh, simple, I usually stick with breakfast. Even if it's a night game, I'll probably just have breakfast uh, twice. Uh, so a little omelet with some spinach and some bacon. My favorite sport other than football, shooting hoops. Uh, my favorite color, uh, man, I wear a lot of black. Uh, favorite color is probably black. You know, my truck's black. Uh, I'm not the best at matching, so it makes it easy on me. Go-to game day fit. Man, I wear these jeans everywhere I go, these black jeans. And, uh, and I throw on a hoodie, big hoodie guy. So black jeans and hoodies, that's my style. My favorite season, football season, baby. Let's go Commanders. I love getting to know a little bit about these guys when what they are and who they are kind of off the field, away from the game. Anything kind of surprise you about that, Logan? I mean, I think the hoop thing, right? <laughs> Anytime an offensive lineman says they can play basketball, yeah, yeah. I get A, really excited, and A, also a little skeptical. So if they are a really good basketball player, that means they're going to be good and get in front of people, pass predict and doing that kind of thing. But also, I'm also like, how athletic are you really? So yeah. this could be an opportunity. A couple of them stood out to me. Um, he says the things you do on the off day, a card shop. Yeah. And... Um, being a Michigan guy, I understand the need for sun on vacations. <laughs> <laughs> and no surprise, of course, he wants to live next to a steakhouse. I get that. The offensive linemen need to be uh, right. very well fed. But the big question is going to be coming. Like, how does he specifically fit into Eric Bieniemy's offense? How is he going to help Logan? Well, I think he's, you know, he's a good starting caliber right tackle in the NFL. And I think that's very, very valuable. I also think he understands and Eric Bieniemy understands how to maximize his skill set. Not the guy with the longest arms in the world. Pretty good athlete, right? But um, kind of speaking to what he does well and insulating him in difficult situations, I think that's kind of, it's, it's a symbiotic relationship. And just having him here being a guy that's familiar with the offense, now he can basically teach all these other guys sure. what to yeah. expect, you know, how to go out there and, and conduct practice, how the practice is going to be. And I think it's going to be great, a great addition to our team. Yeah, he spoke about how important that relationship is um, with your offensive coordinator, with how you know what's going to be expected of you. We are needing big things from this O-line of the upcoming season because that's the reason all the moves were made is to have an uptick in production. That does it for this show. We'll see you next time, though.